Close your eyes and watch your breath. Try to breathe in a way that feels good. And how do you get the breath to feel good? Well, you talk to yourself about it. You pay careful attention, and then you ask questions. Would longer breathing feel better? And you try it. How about shorter? You try that. Heavier, faster, deeper, more shallow. Get into a continuing conversation with the breath. That way, as you get to know it, it'll start getting more pleasant. Then the next question is, how do you make sure that it stays pleasant? So it's a continuing conversation until things get really good inside. No matter how much more you talk to the breath, it's not going to get any better. That's when you can stop a lot of the conversation, just be with the sensation of the breathing. Now, for some people, it's a pretty quick conversation. Other people, it can take for a whole, a whole hour as you explore the different ways in which the breath energy does and doesn't flow in the body. But it's all to the good. You're getting to know the present moment really well. It's good for the health of the body, good for the health of the mind. And much better than the conversations the mind normally tends to get engaged with. We read the descriptions of the first John, and this is a directed thought and evaluation. It sounds like it's something you've got to start doing that you haven't been doing already. We've been doing it already. It's just that it hasn't been focused on the breath. It's been focused on other places, or hasn't been focused at all. It's just been kind of wandering around. What makes those two qualities a factor of jhana is that you're focused on something that is in line with the four frames of reference, and you stick with it. When you stay away from what the Buddha says is not your territory, which is sensory pleasures. You focus simply on the fact that, okay, the breath can feel good. If it doesn't feel good, what can I do to make it feel good? And you stick with that one topic. That's how your mind's ongoing conversation becomes a conversation that gets it into concentration. So as long as the mind is going to be talking to itself, talk to it, let it talk to itself about something that's really good, really focused. It's the focus that makes a difference. It's like the sunlight. It can shine down on things. But if you take a magnifying glass and focus it on one spot, you can actually burn a hole in a piece of paper and start little fires. In the same way, by staying focused on one topic, you can make a difference in the mind. In this case, a difference for the good. And this is what mindfulness is for, is to help it remind ourselves that you've got to stay here. You might call it remindfulness. It keeps reminding you what your work is and how to do it. And that's how the work gets done well.